Hello and welcome. I am Abrar and this is Introduction to Technical Writing. If you are here, I guess that you are planning to get into technical writing or are fresh in this. Either way, I am sure this course is going to help you and this is our agenda. We will start off with what is technical writing, then go on with the types of technical writing, the kind of deliverables a technical writer does, what are the considerations a technical writer must consider and the kind of resources, the types of resources which are tools and applications and skills a technical writer must possess to get his work done. And at the end of the agenda, I'll show you what are your next steps once you complete this video. So let's start off with what technical writing means. First, with a complex and vague definition, a writing that helps users solve problems with technologies and technical subject matter. I don't think this is the best way to explain what technical writing is. Let's check out another one. Bridging the gap between people who know technology and the ones that use it. So what does this mean? Let's take an example here. Consider a mobile application. A user buys the mobile application, which is the technology, and the user may not necessarily know how to use it. And a technical writer over here bridges this gap by creating help documentation, help videos to guide the user, understand the technology, understand the application here. A simpler example, one more example would be a fridge or a television. If a user does not know how to switch channels in a television, he can look at the documentation that a technical writer creates for the user. This is the bridging, the bridging of the technology and the user who uses the technology. This is the ethos of technical writing. This is the core of it. There are hundreds of thousands of products in the market today. And all of these products, at least the quality ones, do need documentation and quality documentation cannot be written by the ones who develop the product it needs to be a trained writer technical writer to be specific to develop this documentation whether it's a form of text or a video such as a tutorial or a walkthrough these this process of developing medium to understand a product is vital for industries to sell their products. This field of writing is here to stay. It's been going for the longest time and the boom is yet to be achieved. So let us discuss the types of technical writing. There are quite a few in the market. Let's begin with. OK. I have listed five of them, but there are many more than this, but these are the prominent ones. So let's take them one by one. Software documentation, that's the field I am in. In software documentation, you write about the products, you create user manuals, you create a video tutorials describing how the product works. And when you come to medical writing, the second one, it falls in a different vertical as the writer here needs to know the nomenclature of medicine. And then you have got aerospace is a complex documentation field. You need to be trained separately for that. And scientific writing is closer to medical writing. You need to know the subject in deep as well as the nomenclature for that. Grant writing is something that you write to gain business. All, all of these have potential in them, but software documentation has been growing with a rapid pace. Now, I want to discuss about the roles and job titles that are very closely related to technical writing, the correlation between technical writing and the rest of these. And I have chosen two of these in particular, business analyst and instructional designer. Let's see how. As a business analyst, uh, BA creates user stories. These are nothing but the features that a user wants in his final product. Technical writer does this as well as BA. And there is something called use cases. This is again how a product works. What are the different cases a product needs to satisfy? You've got 
BRD and FRD. These stand for business requirement document or functional requirement document. Generally, business analysts write this, but technical writer also play a part in developing these documents. Now let's check out how a tech writer's work correlates with instructional designer. An instructional designer is the one who develops your e-learning. The online courses that you guys take these days, literally uncountable number of online courses. These are developed by instructional designers. Then you've got videos, promotional videos, advertising videos that you see every day on YouTube or your Facebook. These are created by instructional designers as well as your software simulations. Software simulations also are a kind of video, but they show the working of a product in live mode. The reason I am trying to show you guys these job functions of the others, I mean, instructional designer or your business analyst is that these tasks may also fall under technical writers, job role and responsibility. In my eight years of experience, I have done the roles of both of these as a BA as well as an instructional designer being a technical writer. Some more intertwining deliverables could be solution design. Solution designs are generally created by solution architects, but don't dwell too much into this. As a fresher or a beginner, you will not be asked to do complex designs such as this. Then you've got sales brochures or marketing flyers, which are typically created by marketing team as they have graphic designers. But yes, writers can play a part here too. And newsletters, again, this is a deliverable that comes from marketing team, but yeah, technical writers are generally expected to contribute to this too, because newsletters are something that's not specific to organization alone. A project or a team can have their own newsletter. Moving on, let's look at a range of deliverables a technical writer is expected to deliver or at least a part of it. Let's start with training materials. The first one is manuals. What are manuals? These are text-based help content, which are written using a simple software like MS Word, and you can publish it by converting into a PDF, or you can e-publish it, electronically publish it on a website. Then coming to online help. Online help here is again text-based help content, but you would need a bit of structured documentation. What does structured documentation mean? Here you need to get into the world of tags, HTML, XML, or DITA. DITA is a technical writing specific standard. I'm not going to dwell too much into that. But yes, help content is mostly structured text-based content. Why? The first one, the manuals which I talked about, whether it is e-published or PDF written in unstructured word processing softwares. Quick reference guides are similar to manuals again. Uh, these are fast paced user guides. As a beginner, you need to focus on this part, training materials. 95% of the times the organizations, when the higher tech writers, they expect them to get into this field. This is your learning curve, the training material. Moving on to software documentation. These are the deliverables that a writer will be involved if he is closely working with the development team. When you are part of SDLC cycle, what is SDLC? Software development life cycle. So all the six names that you see here, release notes or SDLC documents, test strategies, test plans, installation guides, these are the documents that you get information. You sit with developers, interview them, interview the SME, subject matter experts, gather information and then put it on a paper. APA documentation is a trending vertical in technical writing where a lot of code reading is required. Hopefully not code writing, but a writer needs to understand read and understand the code, research more about that. It is a training field in writing and is looked as the future of technical writing. Now moving on to multimedia part. Multimedia, yes, uh, it's not always that a tech writer is expected to create videos or e-learning content because you have a role for this. You have the learning and development teams which hire instructional designers or 
video editors to create this content but if you are a tech writer contributing as an individual and not working with a team and your organization has very limited amount of writers then you might be required to get into the field of multimedia and it's quite interesting if you are strong in your training material and the concepts of generating help content you can apply those concepts but the mode the medium in which the content is conveyed differs rather than text it becomes a video the next topic is considerations and resources stay focused guys good documentation is near impossible to produce without knowing these five concepts language geography style guides accessibility and ddlc we'll talk about these starting with language okay the first one active voice i'm not going to teach you what active voice or passive voice is you have learned this in school just know that in any of the instructional documentation wherever you write a document instructing the reader to do something the language always needs to be active you cannot use passive voice it's discouraged yes you can write good sentences using passive voice but active voice gives much more clarity it stays to the point so that's number one now let's look at the next one maybe some of you have heard about this term some of you may not have let's look what it is parallelism now read the sentences on the screen for me clicking start you point to settings and then click printers second one click start point to settings and then click printers what's the major difference between these two sentences it is the tense the tense of the language if you look at the first one clicking is in continuous then you say you point which is present you cannot go with this structure because it creates ambiguity it does not give clear messages it confuses the reader so always avoid this parallelism parallelism should not exist in technical documentation when you look at the second point click start point to settings and then click printers everything stays in the present i am not promoting present tense over here but it is important to maintain the structure of the sentence and it is not even just about the tense it's not about just the tense but it is in total the structure of the sentence itself the sentence should be fluid should flow freely when the reader reads it that's something that can be achieved when you avoid when you exterminate parallelism next in line is anthropomorphism yes it sounds heavy but let me try to explain that in the simplest words anthropomorphism is the concept that differentiates the language to be used when it comes to humans and the language that needs to be used in terms of machines let us understand this with an example skim these sentences for me the first one which i have marked as incorrect states if you receive a confirmation message the engine behaves as you requested now what's wrong with it an engine does not behave it does not have the emotional capability to react so the usage of terminology is what is wrong with this sentence now if you look at the second one it replaces the behave word with store if you receive a confirmation message the engine stores your data in the specified format this suits for a non living object this is what anthropomorphism tries to teach us the difference of language that needs to be implemented for logical thinking humans and command and execute machines i am going to provide you links to research these concepts more in the description so do check them out now coming to the fourth parameter under languages is bias free yes always make sure that your language is always free of bias for example gender you must not be using language such as he must click on the save button no it does not work that way it can be either the user or you can go with one one must click on the submit button use the neutral language always be cautious about using bias language and now moving to geography this is very important tip guys always remember understand the organization that you are working for understand who the client is 
or whether your organization is catering to clients across the globe. Yes, primarily we are talking about English, but English language at its core differs between geography. In UK, you have terminologies that are different from Americans, spellings that are different from Americans. There are plenty of examples. I'm going to give just one or two. Let's talk about a word called center. Center ends with T-E-R in USA, while it ends with T-R-E in UK. Footpath, as we call it, is generally referred by Americans as sidewalk. And British prefer to call it either pavement or footpath or footway. So you need to be aware of these terminologies to keep your clients happy and feel valued. Our next topic is style guide. So what is a style guide? A style guide provides you guidelines to be implemented for technical publication. Imagine this as a set of instructions. A technical writer, a technical communicator, person who's developing the technical publications needs to follow. The concepts could be as simple as usage of comma, a period, or concepts that we discussed earlier, parallelism, anthropomorphism, What's the limitation of using bold text? It could be as basic as this. So style guides are published internationally. There are style guides that are applicable to every technical writer, but there are organizations who prefer to use their own set of guidelines. For example, IBM has its own technical publication style guide, or Apple has its own, Google has its own. The most popular style guide that I prefer would be MSTP. It is by Microsoft. It is very simple to follow. And I have left a link in the description for you guys to check it out. Style guides, in fact, make your life easier when you're writing a document. Your questions, instead of confusing yourself with a lot of research and reading multiple resources, you can be sure that you follow a specific style guide to maintain uniformity and maintain standard of documentation in your organization. Moving forward, accessibility is next in line. This is again very important subject. Let's look at from the top uses with special needs. Let me explain this with an instance. Let's say you're writing a document. The first thing that you need to focus on is the target audience. Who's the target audience? The one who is going to read this document. If the user the better term would be if the reader who's going to read your document has visual impairment. How do you solve this? You add dictation feature. It is not that difficult these days to add dictation feature in your document wherein a user can just listen to the text rather than read it. So you need to understand if I'm writing this document, are there readers who are going to need additional support than just seeing the text. This concept is equally important in technical writing as well as instructional designing where you have online courses. What if the learner or there has hearing impairment? The solution would be to add text in front of him so that he can read it rather than listen to the audio. And in contrast, if someone has visual impairment, you do the same thing. You add more audio so the user absorbs the information using the audio. The accessibility plays a huge part. Make sure that your work can be accessed by the target audience the way that is simplest to them. The second point says plain language. Understand that technical writing is not content writing. It's not writing a blog. It's not writing a newspaper article. This is just written to make the learner or the reader of the document in any of the forms to understand it as quickly and as easily possible. Write simple English, simple language. To, you do not need to fill your content with rich content and uh, heavy usage of terms. That's not what technical communication is about. It is about communicating the solution in the simplest form. Stick to the plain language. Make sure it is understood. 
the third one quite important one is the format what is a format format of a file as simple as it is let's say you are creating a document in ms word and converting it to pdf while publishing it make sure that the target audience has access to pdf reading application otherwise they will not be able to open your file and this is just an example there are tons of formats out there if you talk about video there are mp4 AVA, and plethora of it so always make sure that the user for whom you are working has appropriate format accessibility so that he can access the file that you are sending him or her Now let us look at some most popular software being used by technical writers today. I have categorized them into three, authoring, video making, and miscellaneous. This in no sense is the limitation of software being used, but I have just collected based on personal experience as well as knowledge gained by my networking. We'll start with authoring. The naming itself could be controversial, but yes, uh, writing your basic documents. MS Word is something that I'm sure everyone watching this video is aware of. One of the most popular software comes with Windows. Very good to create documents have been used for decades. But when you come to the more advanced editing tools, Adobe Frame Maker, Oxygen XML and Adobe RoboHelp, these are for complex documentations, documentations that need reusable content and use data as their primary concept and i have also mentioned media wiki and author cafe these are really good when it comes to collaborative writing when you have multiple authors working on a single document so each of the software has its own pros and cons and is used by the organizations based on their requirement let's have a look at video making the first one, my favorite Adobe Captivate, is primarily used for e-learning development. Your online courses can be created effectively using Captivate. Then you have Camtasia is very good to uh, develop some video demonstrations to capture a product usage and its navigation or any of uh, editing functionalities in Camtasia are really good. Then you have video scribe this one can create very good whiteboarding so do check it out you have free trial on video scribe for seven days i believe so check it out then you have active presenter it is an equivalent software when you compare it to captivate and it's free for the basic edition it's free so anyone of you who's interested in learning video editing or e-learning development check out active presenter windows movie maker again I'm sure a lot of you must have come across it sometime. Windows Movie Maker is also a video editor. It's not as advanced as the rest of them, but still does the job sometimes. Coming to the rest of miscellaneous softwares that uh, writers might come in need of is MS Visio, a Microsoft product. In fact, acquired product MS Visio is really good when it comes to creating process maps, flowcharts as we knew in our schools. It's really good to create complex process maps and you have Snagit, a very good screen capture software. When you need to capture your screen for documentation and edit it mildly, you can go with Snagit or Greenshot. Snagit is paid software. Greenshot is free of cost. Then you have Mockflow. This is not explicitly for tech writers, but it is very good. When it comes to wireframing, wireframing is a concept that comes under business analysis, but few tech writers might argue with me saying that it is also tech writer's job. So Mockflow is something that writers may not extensively use. Then, then there's an interesting software called Canva. This is an online software. Canva is a graphic designing platform. It is really good if you want to create some posters, presentations, flyers, uh, easy to use software that gives you ample of assets, online assets that you can just collate and create nice designs. Could be very useful, does not need expertise of Photoshop, the one that you can see right below it. 
I have listed Adobe Photoshop here and you might argue that this is for graphic designers. But yes, there is no harm in learning Canva and Photoshop a bit could be handful for documentation too. And of course, there is MS PowerPoint for PPTs. The video that you are seeing right now, I created it using PowerPoint for my organization. Uh, so yeah, that's about it when it comes to tools and technology. Yes, there are plenty more. You have new tools, new technology coming on a daily basis these days. It's all about using it for the optimum purpose to satisfy the needs of your organization. Moving forward, we have DDLC, Document Development Lifecycle. Any one of you who's worked in tech writing field for six months, either you should know this concept or you are lagging behind somewhere. Just like how software developers have their own mantra called SDLC, the software development lifecycle. What do you do first? What do you do next? How do you end it? Similarly, tech creators have their own lifecycle called document development lifecycle. Let's have a look at it. This is a lifecycle. Let me start with the requirement analysis. That's your first step. As soon as you get a task, a job to be done, the first step you do is a requirement analysis. What is requirement analysis? You analyze what exactly is the content that you need to develop. How should it be developed? For whom are you developing this? The target audience. These are your analysis. What is the end deliverable? How is this document or video or how is this instruction going to be presented? Who is going to see this? Only when you have this analysis can you move forward. If you are writing a document for an internal team, the language changes from a document that you probably might have to write for a client. So target analysis is very important. Who is going to read the document? Once you are done with your requirement analysis, you move to design. You create a template. You create a skeleton of how the document would be created. And then you send it to your superiors, the appropriate personnel who has the authority to sign off on the design or the content of the end product. They look at it, say that it's okay or make this change. You get your design approved and then you start the main part. You start your development. You start writing the document, collecting information from your SMEs, from your developers. Whoever is your information provider is basically your SME, the subject matter expert. You collect information with them through online calls or uh, via face-to-face -face interviews. You collect the information and you start putting it into your document. That is your development phase. And once you're good with that, you go to the next stage, which is proofreading. I cannot stress on the importance of this proofreading. If done by the one who has written the document, the author, doesn't matter how many times he or she proofreads it, there are definitely going to be some left out errors. So always get the document proofread by a colleague, another tech writer, hope if available, else approach the one who you feel is the best to do the job. Now proofread can be of two different things. A technical writer, a fellow technical writer would check the grammar or the language or design of the document, but a technical review probably done by SME would focus on identifying technical mistakes if there are content related errors in the document. And once you are through with minimum of two reviews, one editor review and one SME review, then you get it signed off and then comes the publish phase. The publishing is as important as the rest of the phases. You need to publish the document in the right format, in the right medium and into the right repository so that your target audience receives it in the most convenient way, accesses it easily and gets the benefit out of it. And publishing is definitely not the last step of DDLC. You have maintenance post that let's say you have created a document describing working off a payroll and the development team has 
perform changes with respect to UI or functionality of the product, you need you are the one who's going to be contacted to redo the document, make changes. This is what comes under maintenance and you go on with the cycle. You collect new document jobs with requirement analysis and end with publishing and continue it with maintenance. This is a very basic flow of DDLC. I will provide you link in the description to understand DDLC better. Now we are at the end of the video and I said once we are done with our agenda topics, I will discuss the next steps that I feel a tech writer who's in his beginning phase of the career or is aspiring to be a tech writer. So here we go. The first and foremost suggestion that I would make is to find and read job descriptions. Know the market. If you want to understand the market requirements of a tech writer, what are the organizations looking for in a tech writer these days? What are the skills they are looking for? What are the concepts that they want their potential employee to have hands-on experience on? Read job descriptions. Find a statistical majority of skills and applications that they are looking for. This helps a lot. This helps you to predict the future of the field. Then I would strongly suggest you to join online communities. I'm not going to name any, but you can easily search on Facebook or your LinkedIn. The groups featured in these uh, social media can help you find many online communities that are related to tech writing. And then I would definitely suggest you to join our technical communication organization. I'm not talking about organization that you work for uh, or an organization that exclusively does technical writing. No, I'm suggesting you an organization that is focused on sharing knowledge, holding conferences or uh, providing volunteer work for you to learn more in the field. Uh, STC. Uh, this is an organization that I'm a part of that I have been a part of since three, four years. It helps a lot, but there are many more than just STC. So research, browse and identify the ones that suit you. And thank you for listening to the video. Subscribe to the channel. I plan to create technical writing related content in future, but mostly application focused. So Give me a like if you think I have done something over here and ask your questions in the comments. Thank you and goodbye. Good luck.